Hello everyone! Welcome to my Assassin's Creed game collection. Um, again, just like my Black Ops collection and things like that. I have certain ones of these um, Assassin's Creed games. Um, I only have them digitally, so I'll talk about them a little bit briefly, but this will probably be a shorter video because I only have four, four hard uh, case versions. Um, so let's begin. Starting with Assassin's Creed 1. This isn't the game I played. I actually did. I played this a really, really long time ago. Like when the PlayStation first came out. And I never cared about it. Then I played Assassin's Creed 2 and I loved it. And then I bought it when it was kind of cheap. And then I came back and I was like, eh. Alright, I'll buy Assassin's Creed 1 just because I was curious. And I did. And I was a little bit disappointed. Although I did like the Origins. I am interested in Altair as a character. But unfortunately... <laughs> This game isn't that entirely great, just because the mechanics are kind of wonky. It's not that updated, but this is a Greatest Hits version of Assassin's Creed 1. Booklet's pretty good, pretty thick, nice booklet. Um, it's overall a good game. I do love it. I love the Assassin's Creed series, although this game's mechanics are a little bit wonky. Again, and then dialogue with characters and stuff like that. There's a few missions in here, but they feel kind of grind-like. It's a little bit difficult to play. In my opinion, but you know, it was their first game, their first Assassin's Creed game, so it wasn't going to be perfect. I have Assassin's Creed 2 digitally downloaded, which is so much better, and I have Assassin's Creed Brotherhood digitally downloaded as well, and I absolutely love them. I have them on my PS3. Um, if you ever, ever, if you've never played an Assassin's Creed game in your life, I would recommend playing Assassin's Creed 2, and if you really loved that, play Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Then after that, you probably should move on to Assassin's Creed 3 or so, maybe one of the new ones. So, that's my opinion, if you really want to know what I think the best one is. The best one, in my opinion, uh, just because I do love the Ezio character, but I'm not just doing that because... I'm not going to say this is my favorite game just because of that character. I really do believe Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood are both... They're both on the same level for me with just everything, mechanics, story, everything, in my opinion. The next, I have Assassin's Creed Revelations. I got this really cheap. It came with a free copy of Assassin's Creed, the original Assassin's Creed on a Blu-ray disc, which kind of contradicts my reasoning for getting this. I don't know what I was thinking. If I didn't think at all, that's probably what happened. <laughs> oh, 3D compatible. Anyway. Assassin's Creed Revelations, uh, this deals with the character Ezio, who is in Brotherhood, and in Assassin's Creed 2, that's his story. In Revelations, you're Ezio, and you go around, and you find these, uh, discs, and when you find these discs, it takes you back in time, and you get to play as the character Altair, kind of answering some questions and stuff about that, and you actually get to see him when he's older, what, ha what happened with him exactly with the Apple of Eden and stuff like that. Which is really good. The name Revelations makes sense. Because you're going through the revelations of what Altair did. And Ezio is figuring these things out. This is, I believe, the it is the last game where you play as Ezio as a main character. He's, as you can see, he's a lot older in this one. So, it makes sense. But this is a really, really great game. For a person that kind of wants to know the, the lore of the game. A lot of people hated this, but I liked it. I really did. I loved this game. I like it better than Black Flag. I like it maybe a little bit better than Unity, but everybody just hates this game and trashes on it completely. I think it's pretty good. It does some innovative things with uh, parkour and everything like that, but a lot of people like to trash on this game. I'm not too sure why. If you just look at it from a game standpoint... And if you're a little bit less on the whole Altair and or Ezio bandwagon, if you're a little bit less on the Ezio bandwagon, you really will love this game and for its lore and the things like that. So please, don't overlook this game, people. Just play it for as it is, and you, you seriously, you'll love it. I absolutely love this game. Up next, Assassin's Creed 3. I have a really, really great return in the Assassin's Creed series. Uh, it was a while. And so we got another game, but this game is really great. Um, you are a new character. Finally, it's done with the whole Assassin's Creed um, Ezio era. It starts out to year, then Ezio for two games, and Revelations as well. Then it moves, finally, after, I don't know, maybe five, four or five years, we finally got a new character we play as. And you, I think you only play as him in this game, actually. You are an Indian during the um, Revolutionary War. 
you're kind of throwing the conflict. The um, uh, British, the Redcoats are the Templar Order, whatever. And then you're on the American side fighting for, you know, liberty and stuff like that. So, Ignite the Revolution. PS3, for some reason, I guess... I guess Ubisoft kind of sides on PS3 for their games and stuff like that. Even in, like, uh, Soul Calibur, you had Ezio as a character for the PS3 version, which was pretty crazy. Assassin's Creed 3. I do love this game. It's really good. I love all the Indian... Because I'm really fascinated with, like, uh, old-timey Indian-type uh, weaponry. And you use tomahawks and things like that. And this it's really fun. And in the DLC, you actually become, like, a bear or something like that. Which is really awesome. And there's also a really cool DLC that's kind of like a what-if scenario if George Washington became, I guess, a Templar and decided to be the king of America instead of be the, you know, president and have limited power. It's kind of a story mode we get take down in Washington, where he's kind of this tyrant of the United States, which is really fascinating, I think. Really good, like, history lessons with all these games, but Assassin's Creed 3, it's on my good side. Up next, Black Flag, which is not on my good side very much. You are a new assassin, and I don't like the way this game starts. You're an assassin, basically you're a pirate, and you steal an assassin coat, and it kind of just... And it seemed like it just was perfectly placed. Like, he just so happened to have the assassins believe him and all this stuff like that. And I feel like the assassin order wouldn't be like that. I think they would know who their assassin brethren was. Things like that. It just kind of bothered me with how they went about with the, this character and how he came to be. And I don't think I completely finished the game and a lot of it is just shooting pirates and boats it's not really an assassin's creed game that much the missions where it was assassin's creed like were usually just chases and stealing gold it was like where's you know my apple of eden where's the lore of the series well it's not really there it's not so this game I was really at my hype for Assassin's Creed games. After I bought three here, I was like, man, I'm getting the next game regardless of what it is. And it's Black Flag, and I got it for full price, and man, it just... It tore me apart, and I didn't like it. I really, really didn't. But after that, the, uh, what's the new one came out? Rogue which was the PS3 version game that was pretty much a mock-up of Black Flag. You're doing more pirate boat simulator crap. <laughs> Rogue was pretty much that game in a nutshell. And then Unity came out on next-gen uh, PS4 and Xbox One. And I did get Unity, and Unity is absolutely amazing. It's really what we needed. And now we have the newer one, which is Syndicate, which is in Steampunk, England, which I plan to get eventually. Just kind of waiting until it's cheap again. Um, I'm, I've kind of lost my trust, I guess you could say, with Assassin's Creed games. Which is sad, because I really do love the series and I love the lore. But it seems like they really are paying attention to the fans now. You know, with their whole thing that they did with Assassin's Creed Syndicate. So hopefully they really do bring it back. And I've heard the Syndicate's a really good game. Uh, in Syndicate, you play as two um, main characters, though. Each of them are kind of different. You level up and stuff like that, which is something I really really do uh, appreciate they actually crack down on like, the leveling up system. Unity is pretty good at it, but Syndicate I've seen so much better. And the same with costumes and stuff like that. And you get you play points, so depending on how many Assassin's Creed games you get, it only gets better. You play points go up and up and up. The more you play these games, the more you play points you get. I definitely recommend if you play a Assassin's Creed game, or just a Ubisoft game in general that is compatible with... Um, uh, not all games have the Uplay um, compatibility with Ubisoft games, but most games do. I recommend, I think Far Cry has it as well. I definitely would recommend getting a Uplay account because you get these Uplay points. Let's say you beat Far Cry completely. You get Uplay points and you spend a few Uplay points on Far Cry. Then a new Assassin's Creed game comes out and then you play it and it's like, oh crap. There's some cool stuff you can get if you had some Uplay points. Well, if you played Far Cry 3, LA 3 or something like that, you'd have some and then you could use it transfers between each game so then you just use your points for other cool crap when new games come out i have like 300 something stored up i've beaten a lot of these games but i've spent a lot of my play points in these games but yeah regardless you're going to end up having more if you spend it so i just keep buying you play games and i keep using them and i have the same account i've had since assassin's creed 2 so 
That's how it goes. Assassin's Creed 1 is the only one of these Assassin's Creed games that don't have Uplay compatibility because it just wasn't around then. So, thank you all for watching this video. If you want to check some of my older ones, my older uh, game um, collection videos, please do. Or my manga one, please do. Every month I have a Candy Crate video come out. My last one's been the most successful video I've ever had on my channel. So, thank you for all the support and subscribe for more content. I'll see you all later.